Homeschooling moms find themselves worrying about a million different things. Uh, but over the last 10 years that I've been homeschooling, I think that I may have actually figured out the biggest mistake I think that homeschooling moms are making. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. Before we jump into that, I do want to remind you that my homeschooling online course is available for enrollment right now. Enrollment closes on the 27th. Um, it launched this week. I'm honestly blown away by the number of you that have enrolled in it. It just means so much to me to see that so many of you trust me to help guide you through this journey. It can be a long and sometimes lonely road and there's lots of divergent paths you can take. It's always nice when you really pour your heart into something to see that it's received in the way that you hope that it would be and in the way that it was intended. I'm so thrilled to have so many of you be founding members for the course. So all that information will be down below. And if you are seeing this video before 2 p.m. Eastern time, then I am also hosting a free webinar. We're gonna talk about why homeschooling is actually easier than you think. And we're also gonna be talking about the three misconceptions that I think hold people back from either homeschooling or enjoying their current homeschooling journey. So that is a free webinar uh, Friday at 2 p.m. All the information is down below. If you're watching this video before then, join us, we'd love to have you. All right, so let's get into the biggest mistake I think many homeschool moms are making. I had an hour long conversation with my mom the other day. Some of y'all may already know little pieces of my story that I was homeschooled on and off through elementary school, junior high school. My younger sister was homeschooled all the way through kindergarten to high school. Uh, she is in graduate school right now and going on to get her PhD. So my mom is a huge source of encouragement and inspiration to me having traveled this road before me. Many of y'all may know her from our private Facebook group. She's an admin in that group and uh, does occasionally share her wisdom and knowledge with us there. So she and I were on the phone the other day and we were just talking about some different homeschooling things. And as we were discussing some of the common themes that we hear moms struggling with and that we see, one of the biggest things that we both just kind of noticed is that homeschool moms are still trying to use the school system's ruler, the school system's metrics for measuring their child's success. And I think that that is arguably one of the biggest mistakes that you can make because you're leaving this system behind, okay? If you've chosen to leave the public school system and you are homeschooling your children, you're choosing their curriculum, you're doing all that, you are leaving that system behind. Um, and I do think there's something to be said for leaving the metrics of it behind. Now, I think the reason that that happens is because many families have sort of left, but they always wanna leave the door open to be able to send their kids back to public school. So with that, you need to make sure your kids are at the grade level that they should be at for public school should you need to send them back. And I completely understand that. I'm not gonna tell you uh, not to care about that or not to do that. You absolutely have to do what is right for your family. And if you really feel that there's a good chance that you may be sending them back into the public school system, then I, I understand wanting to keep them on, on task, on target for what the school system expects. I do think it's incredibly important to pull back and view your homeschool and your homeschooling journey from a 30,000 foot view. Try not to get caught in the day-to-day -day minutia and those metrics and measurements, um, particularly in the elementary school years. I was just speaking with someone the other day who does some research on childhood development and about this whole idea of grade levels and expectations, how we retain information. And one of the things that really stuck out to me in that was much of the extra things, the things that aren't reading, writing, and math skills, the things that kind of fit around that are things that children often just do not retain. A lot of times we are like hamsters on wheels trying to get first graders and second graders to care about history and remember historical events and dates. It's almost, if you enjoy it and your child enjoys it, then teach it and do it. But to beat yourself up when you could just have those conversations in context with movies that they're watching, things that they're enjoying, there's other ways 
to get in some of that information, this is where child-led learning becomes so important because if your child has an interest in one of these topics, dive in. Um, but if there's no interest from the child, it's unlikely they're going to retain that information before a certain age range. So I think we homeschooling moms are causing ourselves a lot of stress and anxiety with trying to keep up with certain school standards. You know, whenever I ask you guys, what is concerning you most about homeschooling? Hands down, the number one response I get just blows everything else out of the water is, am I doing enough? That is the number one thing. Am I doing enough? And I think that that question is born out of living in limbo of the ruler that you are using to measure your student's success, still sort of attempting to use that public school ruler uh, with your homeschooled child. And there's so much more we need to be looking at. One of the biggest benefits of homeschooling is your ability to help your child grow and learn globally across all areas, not just their intellect, but their morals, their values, their character, um, various skills, things like that. That's all stuff that you can incorporate and all things that you should be including in this measurement that you're taking. Um, and I think so often homeschooling moms kick that all that stuff aside and all they focus on is the testing, the grade standard testing. Um, and again, I wanna be really clear that I completely understand that depending on where you live, what your state's requirements are, your children have to take tests every year. So in some capacity, they do have to keep up to quote unquote grade level expectations. But I would just argue that we not put as much weight into that, into those test results before your child gets to middle school and high school. Prior to that, I think we need to pull back some of the pressure about the expectations of what those test scores should look like because the whole idea is that we are reframing education, we're reframing learning. And while homeschooling can still be done in a traditional style where you're doing school at home and choosing curriculums that give that you know, sort of public school feel just at home. That is a leg of homeschooling. That's a method that many people use. But I still think even when you're doing that, your child is typically wrapping up school in a much shorter time than they would be in a traditional environment, which leaves so much more time in their day for other things, for learning other things, for developing other skills. And my hope would be that we as homeschool moms can be better at recognizing the other ways that our children are progressing, the other ways that they are succeeding, the other ways that they are extraordinary. Maybe they're not extraordinary test takers. Maybe they're not extraordinary at math. And guess what? They might not be that even if they were in public school. I think a lot of people expect that if their child is struggling in homeschool that they would have done better if they were in public school. That may not be true. I think we need to reframe how we are viewing these things, recognizing the areas that our children are extraordinary may not always be in the educational sphere. And so we need to look at them more holistically, look at them more as a whole person and judge our success, judge whether or not we are doing enough uh, based on the progress of them as a whole person, not just as this piece of the educational model. All of this stress and anxiety is born out of the fact that you love your children. You want what's best for your children. We moms beat ourselves over the head with a baseball bat constantly with this idea of, are we doing enough? Are we failing our kids? Because we pour ourselves into them every single day and we love them more than we love ourselves, more than life itself. We want them to have the best. We want them to succeed. We want them um, to find joy in what they're doing. And so we can internalize that and really get into our own heads. Um, but I think if we can set that down for just a second, pull ourselves back, take that global view of our children as a whole person and recognize that because homeschooling is about more than just the educational piece, that what we are evaluating should be about more than just the educational piece. That's my little soapbox about the biggest mistake I think homeschooling moms are making. I hope that y'all hear my heart on this. Whenever I say things like this, I always feel like I need to add all these disclaimers and caveats. I'm not gonna do that this time because if this video is speaking to you, then this video is for you. If this video is annoying you or making you go, well, what about this? Well, what about that? 
then this video is not for you. My intention is always to encourage you, not discourage you, um, to help you see the broader picture of the decision you've made to homeschool your kids um, and to have confidence in that, to have pride in that decision and to know the importance of the impact you're having on your children um, and how valuable that is. That's it for me today. I hope I'll see you guys at the webinar. If you'll be there this afternoon, I hope to see you there. And obviously excited to see so many of you in the homeschooling course starting on Monday. So that's it for me, you guys. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you again very soon.